you identify as a as a Navy man? Do you identify yourself with the Korean War at all? As a, a yeah, I was in a, a submarine officer. I was a submarine officer during the Korean War, yeah. and a lot of part of the World War. Uh, I was in the Pacific uh, when the Korean War started, and uh, up until 1950, and then I was transferred back to the East Coast. So yes, I still I still um, feel well personally. Uh, involved in Korea. In fact, I just came back from North Korea recently. Yeah, I wanted to ask you know, in the in the White House diaries, you write about visiting Korea, and you had a huge crowd there, mm -hmm. like a million or more people. Yeah, um, why did you have that kind of crowd in South Korea? <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it was an extraordinary. Some estimates up to two million people in South Korea, but you you're, you think of closer to a million in the book, and. Tell me about what you've learned. I know when you micro study a place like Alaska or the Middle East, Korea has been a big part of your your life. What's going on there now? And would you today, Jimmy Carter, be willing to go to to North Korea tonight, tomorrow, the next week, and try to negotiate a, a some kind of settlement after this recent uh, you know back and forth going on? Well, in a way, I hate to say this, but the North Koreans trust me. Uh, Sixteen years ago. We were faced with the prospect of a Korean War because uh, Kim Il Sung, who is worshipped in North Korea, I'm not exaggerating, he's a combination of Jesus Christ and George Washington for North Koreans. Um, because of various reasons I don't have time to go into, he decided that he would expel the International Atomic Energy inspectors and start reprocessing spent nuclear fuel rods from the uh, ancient uh, atomic reactor that produced electricity. And the United States started trying to impose much more severe sanctions on North Korea than they had been since, since the 1950s when the Korean War was over. Um, Kim Il-sung announced that if that happened, he was going to attack South Korea. And the fact is that then and now, North Korea could almost totally destroy uh, uh, Seoul the capital of South Korea, because very close to the, to the border. I decided to go over and try to resolve the issue. And I got reluctant approval from President Bill Clinton. I went over and, and negotiated with Kim Il-sung successfully, and the United States eventually put that into an official agreement by negotiating in, in Geneva. And that's what, that's what Clinton, Bill Clinton did. Later, and, and, and Kim Il-sung stopped the nuclear process, and, and we were well on the way toward a peace treaty with North Korea. When, when President Bush came into office, though, that entire process was undone. In, her, in his inaugural address, uh, President Bush declared that uh, North Korea was an axis of evil, and to make a long story short, North Korea began to reprocess the nuclear fuel rods, and now they've got six or seven capable nuclear explosives. So. Back in July, the North Koreans asked me to come over again because they wanted to deliver a message to the U.S. government that, again, they wanted to negotiate and do away with their nuclear weapons and to have a, a permanent peace treaty to replace the ceasefire that has existed now <clears throat> between the United States and North Korea. So th that's, what I've, that's what I've done. But uh, if, if President Obama asked me to go over, I would certainly be glad to do so, but I wouldn't uh, presume as a private citizen to intercede. Would the Carter Center at all, or would you, you if at this point, if it, tensions get terrible there, it looks like a war could break out between North and South, would you go if you weren't asked by President Obama simply because you really believe that you could perhaps stop what could be a Yes, horrific? I would go, but only if I got permission from the White House. Only, yes. I, I never have been on a foreign trip into a troubled area without getting prior permission or approval from the White House and I always make a report to the White House when I get back. Sometimes I have to say that the President was not enthusiastic about my going, but it's just a matter of, um, of my commitment that I don't go unless I get permission to go. And this past time when I went over in, in August, I got permission from the White House, but they made it clear that I was going to represent the Carter Center and not to represent the White House. They didn't have anything to do, do with the trip. I went on a private plane, and when I got back, I uh, made a full report to uh, Secretary of State Clinton. George W. Bush's um, <clears throat> axis of evil speech, including North Korea, was yeah. that a mistake that he included them? I think so, because at that time, North Korea and the United States had very good relations. 
relatively speaking. Uh, Secretary of State Madden Albright had already been to Pyongyang to visit <clears throat> on an official basis with the North Korean leaders. <clears throat> and President Clinton had decided to go to North Korea in December of, of 2000. But he had to cancel his visit because of the standoff between Bush and Gore. Nobody knew who was going to be the president, so President Clinton couldn't leave. So that was a situation of, of relative accommodation, or certainly uh, communication between Pyongyang and Washington then. But when President Bush made his speech classifying North Korea as an axis of evil, uh, then that was a signal that the Bush administration was abandoning the agreement that I had helped negotiate that President Clinton had concluded with the North Koreans.